Okay, so I'm just starting out the running animation, so this looks pretty good already. We've got his arm going. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the left arm, or for the right arm, rather. Right. Right. Okay, we're going to want that to be opposite, though. There we go. Looks pretty good. Um, jack this up a little bit. Okay. Now, do something with the legs. Fig dot left. So just so I can show you guys, there's an object up here, which is the rig. There's also Mario, but that just has some basic stuff for now. I'm probably going to add to this, like a bunch of different things for state, obviously. Um, I don't know how I'm going to handle state. At the moment, I'm like setting the string from stand to jump um, and doing stuff based on what the string is. And I don't know, that might be okay. So rig is the big, the biggest object that I have. It's got information about the position, the location, rotation, and scale of every individual object that makes up Mario. And he's made up of a bunch of different objects. Um, head, chest, waist, arms, like upper arm, lower arm, upper leg, lower leg, which I call thigh and chin. Uh, I can show you guys what that looks like here. I'll set S. So S is a scale factor for Mario's spacing, basically. So I could do this. I could say S equals mouse X divided by like 100. OK. And then you can see he's made up of separate objects. So maybe I'll get rid of the floor for a second. Yeah, OK, there he is. So yeah, he's made up of a bunch of different separate objects. And what I'm doing is I'm rotating and translating to the point that I want. Just doing a bunch of translation, rotation, translation, rotation, and moving the coordinate frame around. And you can see that down here for like uh, some of these push pops end up not being necessary because they end up getting like really nested. But it's nice to like at least keep to like show the different stages. Um, anyway, so like for example, where do we start? Oh, this was uh, to make him like translucent, which is kind of cool because I wanted to like make him translucent, translucent, and show the frame inside of him. So like, I could do something like this. Now he has a head frame. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I should draw it a second after the model. Oh, that's worse. Mm hmm wonder why. No fill. Uh, stroke. Maybe just no fill. Fuck well, it, it's not important. Okay, um, getting sidetracked. And there's a train. All right, yeah, push, pop, push, pop. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Like you translate a certain distance and then you rotate and then you draw the object. And uh, these frames do kind of work. I'll do a frame on like something moving so it's clearer. I'll do a frame of reference on his hand just to give you an idea. There we go. Okay, so there's a coordinate frame on his hand. As you can see, looks like he's holding a coordinate frame. And that coordinate frame is moving around like crazy. And you can see the frame before 
on his arm. So we move from this frame to this frame. And uh, that happens with a translation and then a rotation. OK, fascinating stuff. So moving on. go back to the running animation. So we want to add left, not upper leg, thigh, dot rotation dot x equals cosine of 3 times t. Rotation. Cool. And do the same thing with the other leg. Right. Okay, make a note. It's pretty legit. And then we'd probably want to give his whole body like a tilt. So one way I'm thinking of doing that is like uh, setting his, setting Mario. I didn't have a rotation yet. I don't think I do. <clears throat> no. Okay. Rotation. A1 and X. A Y. And a Z. Rotation.x equals 1, just like this looks like. And then we have to rotate x. So this is happening before all of our push pops. So this is going to apply to like the entire space, basically. So we can rotate x. 1. Oh, mario.rotation.x. Yeah, perfect. So I want that like that and stuff. Just subtle. Cool. Yeah, and then we definitely would need some. Uh, Uh, motion in the y direction. So I can show you like that that rotation took effect. Maybe I'll do this. Add the coordinate frame after Mario's rotations. So you can see now what that looks like. And we can set these to our zero points to um, and it's okay, we'll leave it for now. No, we don't yeah, we don't need to do that. We can just do we'll do like a translate. To Mario's location, which I think I have somewhere. No, I don't. Yeah, I do. Here it is. Okay, so we want to translate to Mario's location. Sick. Okay. And then maybe we want to do location dot y. Yeah, okay, so now he's moving. Speed that up. Speed it up and make the amplitude a bit less. I have a feeling this needs to be twice as fast. Yeah, that looks pretty good. He's going through the floor a bit, and his knees aren't 
bending at all. Maybe let's slow down the timing just a bit so that we can see what this looks like better. So if we wanted to get some knee bending action, we could do that as well. We could, uh... oh, I need, it's distracting me. All right. So now we want his knees to bend. Let's get organized here. Left, right, 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 left. Rig dot left dot shin dot rotation dot x equals cosine of three times t. Oh my god. Leg is breaking. That is horrific. Looks good looks good on the way back. So we'll do like minus one. This cosine goes from zero to one. Now it's just perfectly straight. It's plus one. Yeah. And then this whole thing needs to be not as extreme. So divided by two. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for the right shin. Rig dot right dot shin dot rotation dot x equals cosine of three times t plus one divided by t. Oh no. Now it's the opposite of this one. So we will do negative cosine. Or no. Did we just make the whole thing negative? Oh, whoops. I'm messing around with the wrong one. There we go. Yeah. All right, and that, this makes sense, the way he's like jumping and landing. Like his high point is when he's like in the air and his low point is when his feet are theoretically just touching the ground. So now we could just move him up a little bit to make this look a little bit better. Now, because this is happening after the rotation, we're actually moving him along this Y. Not that it matters a ton. Let's just see what it looks like if we do it before. I think I like that better. This or this? Let's speed it up to get a better idea. Let's do this. that or this I feel like there's barely a difference all 
Oh, there might not be a difference. No, there's no difference. Because this is where the rotation happens. Ugh, my bad. Right? I would, that's just setting the values that get passed to this. So it would be this versus the other one. And let me get rid of these so they don't bias anything. That. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Nice. It should be like mouse X. Whoa. Even about about a hundred. I kind of like it upright. I guess from behind, this looks more familiar. And it's not a huge deal. Um, let's do what do I want to do next. Oh, I feel like I want to make the arms like swing a little bit more. So before I did a factor, like I did like let exage, like exaggerate the motion. You could do like 1.1 1 .1, and then just it's just a multiplier to multiply everything by it. Multiply by exage. It's like especially the arms. And this is what happens when you get too close to it, and then you let you're just like it gets tough to improve it. I feel like sometimes you gotta come at it with fresh eyes. Maybe that's a trap. Now, the other thing is, it would be really nice to instead of having this up and down motion being sinusoidal, I think it would be better to have it be parabolic. So, kind of like this. This is so small. So instead of a sign, like how it would actually move would be technically right, be jumping. It would just be parabolas over and over and over. And I do have a parabola function returns a parabola <clears throat> mm, all right maybe I'll do that later <laughs> I'm gonna stop this for now because I've been recording for a bit